One of my subscribers recently asked me if he'd be able to fly his plane after hip surgery. It's a really good question. I've replaced and resurfaced the hips of quite a few airline and private pilots over the years. But what if you aren't a pilot and you just want to fly somewhere on business or on holiday? Keep watching and I'll tell you all about it. Excuse me, Captain. I know this may sound silly, but can you fly? Nope. Never had a lesson. I've always loved flying. My father was in the Royal Air Force. He flew Neptunes and Shackletons in coastal command. Back in the Cold War days, they tracked Soviet spy ships and submarines. Here we are in 2023, and Russian ships are still probing our defences. Nothing changes. I learnt to fly and got my private pilot's licence when I lived in Australia many years ago. I kept it going for a few years when I came back to Britain, but it was too expensive to keep up, and life just moved on. I'm lucky to have a good friend who has a light aircraft business and I've been flying in some classic light aircraft with him a few times recently. There's nothing like the thrills of takeoff and landing and I love the whole experience of flying. If you have a pilot's license, then you know that you have to pass a stringent medical to use it. You must ground yourself if you don't fulfill the criteria. Professional pilots are required to have a class one medical. Private pilots need a class two medical. This has similar requirements to a class one, but the renewal period is longer. The medicals are a very thorough assessment of your physical condition. I had a look at the medical guidelines for professional pilots. Having a hip replacement does not disqualify you from flying, but you have to be fully recovered from surgery and not taking medications like codeine that might make you drowsy. In my experience, surgery makes you feel tired for several weeks. Your reaction times increase and you might find it difficult to make complicated decisions. Clearly these aren't good things for a pilot and his passengers. If in doubt, ask your surgeon if he or she is happy for you to go back to flying. Let's look at the problems that private pilots in light aircraft might face when going back to flying after a hip replacement. The main challenge for someone with a hip replacement is getting into and out of the plane. In some light aircraft you have to climb onto the wing and post yourself into a narrow cockpit. The risk here is having a dislocation, so I wouldn't attempt it until you're fully recovered and not thinking about your hip. This is usually around three months after surgery. Airline pilots will probably find it easier because the cockpit is much larger and access shouldn't cause you trouble. Once you're in the cockpit and in your seat, then you should be fine. In an aircraft, you use pedals to steer the nose wheel turn the rudder and use the brakes. You might find this uncomfortable on the operated side until you get used to it again. What if you just want to be a passenger? If you have to travel within a few weeks of surgery, ask the airport staff for assistance. They've got buggies and wheelchairs that will take you to the gate and they'll help you to board the aircraft. But what about security? Well, the metal detectors will be triggered and the security staff will do a more detailed scan. There's no point in having a letter to say you've had hip surgery. The security staff take nothing at face value and they'll ignore it, and this is quite right too. Climbing up into an aircraft can be tricky, particularly if you aren't fully recovered. And getting to your seat on a busy flight can be quite challenging, even if you haven't had surgery. I have quite a few patients who travel to and from the Channel Islands in the ATR-72 operated by Blue Island Airlines. The ground staff at Stahampton Airport are very well used to helping patients get in and out of this excellent aircraft without too much trouble. What about other risks? Well, there's always the possibility of having a deep vein thrombosis on or after a flight. The thrombosis can break off, causing a pulmonary embolism, which is sometimes fatal. I advise my patients not to travel long haul for at least three months after surgery to reduce the risk of this happening. Wear flight stockings, Keep well hydrated and do the exercises that the airlines recommend. If you have extra risk factors for blood clots, then you should ask your doctor for advice. I hope you found this useful and interesting. For advice that's specific to you, you must speak to your surgeon and medical examiner. If you'd like to know more about anything to do with hip surgery, then please get in touch. If there's a particular subject that you'd like me to cover, then leave a comment below or send me an email. Thanks for watching. See you next time.